for uh, the invitation and I learned a lot la in last week's workshop. Uh, it's a pity that we will be leaving early now. Uh, right now I'm heavily drugged, so excuse me if I sometimes I sound incoherent, uh, but uh, it's a short talk, so it's okay. I mean, so so uh, last uh, week the students have already learned what is HK multiplicity and experts here already know, so I don't have to get into the detail, but uh, my setup will be R is a Noetherian ring, uh, I mean Noetherian commutative ring, and I is an ideal in R, length of R mod I is finite. So either my R is a local ring or R is a graded ring. And in that case, uh, in fact a standard graded ring, in that case I is a homogeneous ideal. So that will be my setup. So we all know that uh, once you have ideal of finite length, I can think of a length function and take its limit. So this is a notion introduced, you can say, uh, well defined by Monsky. So this was nothing but HK multiplicity of R with respect to I. And this is a length of, you take R and I, Q Frobenius. So Q stands, so here, always characteristic of R is positive, say P, and Q is P to the power, say S. So limit S tends to infinity and normalize it QD minus one, uh, QD. Uh, and D is the dimension of the ring. So uh, the thing we know already that the limit does exist and in fact uh, it's a positive real constant. And so this belongs to R greater than or equal to one. So in the last week's workshop, uh, the last theorem uh, Smirnov has proved was that what does this invariant tell? The last theorem he proved was the theorem uh, resolved by uh, Washa, uh, Watanabe and Yoshida, which characterizes that th the regularity of the ring in terms of this. So it says uh, EHK of RM, so this is theorem, is one if and only if you assume, of course, R is a formally unmixed in this case uh, here, if R is regular local ring. So this is, this is a well-known theorem, it's kind of folklore one can say now. So the next question should be asked that what next? What, what, is, what can you say about the next bound? So this was again a conjecture of Watanabe and Yoshida. So let me define this ring which I am repeatedly going to use, which is a coming a quadratic hypersurface. So it is RPD K X naught XD is a d-dimensional quadratic hypersurface given by x0 square, x1 square plus xd square. So after that, if ring is not regular, what is the least uh, number it takes? In uh, usual multiplicity, we don't even have to ask that because they are all integer values and here we don't know what is uh, this HK multiplicities are going to take. They are just real numbers. So that was a conjecture. This is a conjecture now also. Conjecture of Watanabe Yoshida. It is as follows. So it says, um, uh, let A be a, uh, so excuse me, let A be a formally unmixed, how do I say? Un formally unmixed means if I take a completion, it said that all minimal components are associate components are there. There are no embedded primes uh, and say are of same Num, uh, same dimension, characteristic is not two, that's your setup. Then the conjecture can be put broadly into two parts. One says, what is the HK multiplicity of, uh, I'm sorry, of dimension D. So suppose I take any ring of dimension D and characteristic is P, uh, which is not two then what is the least bound you can have? And I should say one more thing, and not regular. So perhaps I should rewrite, this is the uh, formally unmixed non-regular ring of dimension D uh, and characteristic positive 
of uh, A B positive, not 2. So, the question, the conjecture is about the lower bound. So, it says E H K of A. Here, when I do not write anything, I mean I am trying to look at the multiplicity with respect to the maximal ideal. So, this is always greater than or equal to E H K R P D. So, here, here, if you look at it, this, uh, I mean the statement, this one says any, if I take any ring, then its uh, lower bound is equal, like get, uh, greater than or equal to 1, which is the multiplicity of a polynomial ring. So, the next best class of uh, rings comes is a quadratic hypersurface. So, part of that conjecture, if ring is not regular, then it is greater than or equal to 3. So, this is the best behaved ring vis-a-vis -vis the HK multiplicity. Okay. And the second part of the conjecture says, E H K of R P D is greater than or equal to 1 plus M D. Okay, so this is a, what is 1 plus M D? I'll just define in a moment. So this is if I take sec of X plus uh, 10 of X and I take my norm of X to be less than pi by 2. So it is a convergent power series. So it can be written as 1 plus M D X D. Uh, d from, oh, d is the back notation. Uh, no, yeah, d is okay. d is from 0 to infinity. So, this one? This one? Okay. This conjecture is by Monsky. Okay. So, perhaps I uh, will change that actually. Yeah. So, uh, so what is the purpose of, mainly I will be concentrating on this actually. So, the pur what is the purpose of this one? So, this statement is giving you a characteristic free bound for a d-dimensional ring. That is what it is doing it. So, I would in that regard, uh, I would uh, like to mention what whatever I know, uh, Keishi can correct me, that uh, for a dimension d equal to 4, this was proved by themselves by the author of uh, Watanabe and Yoshida. Then phi, I think, uh, let me, uh, uh, then d less than or equal to 6, it was done by Yoshida and d uh, less than or equal to the part a was by Aberbach and Inescu. Uh, so this, in general, this thing is a still open question also. Then. Uh, here, once I talk of characteristic free lower bound, I should mention the work of Seligbas, uh, uh, Dao, and Huneke and Zhang, which have already all, already given a characteristic free lower bound. They have given, but now there is something I would like to mention as a result of Monsky, Gessel and Monsky, which says, if I take RPD, quadric hypersurface, and as P tends to infinity, it is going to be 1 plus m d. So, combining this result, it just suggests that this is going to be the best lower bound. So, so this, uh, so you can ask then why does it imply this? So, E H K R P D in general need not be monotonic increasing or decreasing. Um, so, there are examples. And uh, now, talking of this conjecture, I would also recall a question I, I, I can't uh, by Yoshida, or I think was it a conjecture or something. Uh, he says if I fix a D, D is a dimension, then the HK multiplicity E H K R P D, the HK multiplicity of this uh, quadric hypersurface is a decreasing function. of p. So, that is a, I, I do not know why he got this because, uh, I mean why he thought of this one because you know the uh, famous examples of uh, Hans and Monsky. So, this one says if I take rp, now rp, I am just denoting rp to suggest the underlying characteristic of the r is p. If I take a Fermat quadric for example of characteristic p of x4 plus y, y4 plus z4, then, uh, then what? Then E h k of r p is 3 plus 1 upon p square. If p is congruent to plus or minus 3 mod 8, and the next possibility is p is congruent to p 
plus of 1 minus mod 8, right. So, these are two kind of prime numbers. In that case, this is the 3. So, this is oscillating as yes, a p varies, okay. So, this is the background. Uh, now, uh, the main, one of the main theorem of this talk today is the following. So, it says there exist polynomials, there exist uh, what? There exist uh, polynomials f t and g t irrational number q t. So, this is a characteristic free polynomial I meant to say such that E h k of uh, R p d the quadric surface is greater and equal oh no, no, no equal to 1 plus m d plus f t upon g t t equal to 1 over p. I mean there is nothing second. If p is greater than uh, 2 to the uh, if p is greater than uh, 2 to the power integral value of d mod 2 into d minus 3 something like that. So, these okay such that so you have this formulation of the HK multiplicity such that One, the polynomial f t g t is a positive, takes a positive value for all uh, positive rationals and second thing is a and is a strictly, uh, strictly uh, decreasing, no, decreasing, increasing, increasing function. function of t in a neighborhood of 0. So, what is the implication of this theorem on these two results? So, <coughs> this one is saying since there is a non-negative num quantity, this E h k r p t is always greater than to 1 plus m t. In fact, P greater than uh, d minus 3, uh, d, d minus 1 will do. We do not require such a higher bound. That is that was a part 2 of the conjecture, this one. And the second one is saying this is an increasing function of t. So, that means in the neighborhood of 0, that means this is as p varies, this is a strictly decreasing function of p as p varies in a for large enough p onwards. That is what it says. So, which is a which kind of a, says uh, relates with the conjecture or uh, question of Watanabe uh, uh, here it is saying for all p, but this one is saying for p large enough this is going to be. But on the other hand this is saying that this function is going to be strictly uh, decreasing function of p that implies just not a decreasing function that gives you for free. So, this is the thing. So, what is happening? So, techniques uh, I suppose uh, people have employed uh, I suppose some volume function and I did not quite understand I must admit. So, here uh, what we do we apply the technique of uh, something uh, called which I which we call uh, HK density function. So, let me quickly recall. So, this is this formula this whole setup what I am going to work uh, right now is going to work for any graded standard graded do ring or in fact graded domain with what, so, let me recall quickly the notion. I would cannot spend too much time now. So, here R of i the setup is this. It is a graded pair or I should strictly say gra standard graded pair. What do I mean by this? So, I mean by this your R is a standard graded ring. Choose over k which is a perfect field, okay. And I is a graded ideal, homogeneous ideal, says that R mod I is a finite length. So, length function makes sense. So, now just look at the definition of HK multiplicity. So, this is giving you a limiting function of the length function. 
Now, my R is graded, I is graded, so Frobenius power is graded. So quotient is a graded ring, R mod IQ. So I use that. So I define the function as follows. So define, using such a graded pair, you define a function f of r of i from r positive to r positive as follows. I'll just define um, f of r i of x is limit of f s of x as tends to infinity. Now I am defining f s x which is uh, nothing but you take the length of r mod i of q. So q is p s now and at x q upon q to the power d minus 1. So instead of taking the length function like this, I take the x q graded piece of the length of r q function at each s and go modulo q d minus 1. So you are constructing a sequence of step functions now using the length function. And then you take pointwise limit of that function and call that to be a hk density function. Is it okay? Are there any questions right now? Okay, so here, so question there, I mean there, there would be obvious questions here. I mean, does it make sense, I mean, so that was the whole point. So here, the thing is, one, is that f of s, the sequence of functions s, it converges uniformly. Formally to f of r i, which is hk density function. And the second, this function is continuous, f of r i is a continuous, compactly supported function. Having these two information, the following obvious, I mean, uniform convergence allows me to uh, interchange the limit with the integral. So in particular, you have a co continuous compactly supported function. So it is integrable. Take its integration. It's going to be your HK multiplicity. So q is equal to p s. So at p s level, you take this function. Okay. So this is uh, the thing. So what is happening? I mean, why one is suddenly looking at this thing? So this function has several advantage. In fact, this comes uh, very naturally. It is a uh, first of all is additive function. Whatever you mean, take components, take uh, other things. Uh, it's a multiplicative function with respect to segre product, tensor product. That is, uh, segre, that is for free, sur surprisingly, which uh, we don't know about uh, multiplicity as far as segre product is concerned. And the, the one, uh, one thought that there may be something, because you have continuous functions. So if I take a continuous fun compactly supported function, take its Fourier transform. So class of such functions which are continuous, compactly supported will sit inside, embed in this class of holomorphic functions. So you hope to do some kind of complex analysis or analysis to imply. So that's one thing. Then question people ask, is it, is it, does it really help you in computing uh, HK multiplicity? So answer is it's neither difficult or easier than that. But if I compute HK multiplicity of two pair of ideal, I can talk about their segre product, which I get it for free. That's one thing, but many times, uh, uh, and uh, since I am taking a length function, this invariant of taking a length uh, uh, invariant corresponding to a pair and looking in a spread out fashion, rather than adding it up, somehow that hold, seems to hold many more invariants of the graded pair. So for example, uh, if uh, your ring is strongly F regular, which is same as F regular in its graded case. So if I look at the um, support of the function, I said compactly supported, the largest suppose. So that corresponds to a, a F pure threshold. That is a result of uh, Watanabe and myself. So, so this seems to carry many more familiar invariants of the ring also, and perhaps it will give more invariants of the ring. So here, uh, 
philosophy is also that ki, though I may not be able to compute the function, it's true, but the nature, I can figure out how this function varies vis-a-vis -vis as characteristic changes or whatever changes, I, the shape of the function may give me the uh, defin, uh, information which I need. So quadratic hypersurface is one of such example. So the first uh, result uh, you prove here, uh, the, this assertion, assertion it, it is not actually computing the function at all, but the nature of the function gives me this information. So how much time I have? Okay. <clears throat> so, so theorem. So this is about quadric hypersurface. So it says there would be an interval. I call it I P, just to denote that the interval depends on characteristic P inside a unit interval. And this interval I call it difficult range. And you take N naught to be a some midpoint approximately point of the interval 0 and d minus 1. So that n naught approximation depends on the odd and even property of your uh, d of the quadric hypersurface. So here what I get, I, write, I want to write now the density function for the quadric hypersurface. So it looks like as follows, f of r uh, d, uh, I'm sorry, what is it, r p d of x looks like f infinity of oh, f infinity of rx uh, where if x minus n naught doesn't belong to this difficult range this is a square or round bracket never mind so and is equal to f of r infinity x plus i'm going to define this uh, quickly say something about these functions of x minus n naught if x minus n naught belongs to the difficult range. So this will be the, this is how the function would look. Now what, what are these but, so the property of this is that f infinity you are looking is a continuous function and Infinity shows that it doesn't depend on the characteristic. So this is a characteristic free part of the thing. And second, uh, mu infinity uh, p is a function, in fact, from the interval 0, 1 to interval 0, 2. And it is a continuous function. So it's a bounded continuous function. That is a point here. And third, a very important thing, that length of the interval i p tends to in 0 as p tends to infinity. So suppose I have this information. So I claim then in that case, um, uh, you, you prove this is automatic here. So it's very easy. So now just look at it. So I'm giving part two of uh, YA or Monsky. I'm, I don't know, what should I say here? So look at this, look at that formulation. So this one is telling me, I look at the EHK of RPD. So now I have to integrate this function. I'll integrate over this and integrate over this, but this is a non-negative part. So it's, it's greater than or equal to integra integration of f infinity of rpx r a r d of x dx 0 to infinity. Uh, but now this is saying uh, the ip length of ip tending to 0 says that this is same thing as saying limit of p tending to infinity sorry integral f of rp rp dx x 0 to infinity. So this is what you get and this is now equal to limit of, now my density function formula says this is the limit of EHK of RPD, right? So 
I'm just applying the shape of the function. And but now this is the theorem result. What we have proved, it says the limit exists. But actually, the, uh, the result of gessel monsky says this is equal to 1 plus MD. So you always get it for free. So this is the thing here. Now what? So this, uh, so how are you getting all this thing? So this is the first part of the, this result. You get this formula for density function of quadric hypersurface. Now you, to reach the formula, the uh, final form, formula like that, you need to know how this function behaves in the interval IP. So actually I don't, I don't know how it behaves, but I have something as here. So, so what here to formulate, to arrive at this even uh, the first formula and the second one, what we are using is the classification of ACM bundle on quadric hypersurface. This comes via matrix factorization and which is relies on Turner's periodicity theorem, but that's all over C. But later M uh, classification of maximal cohen macaulay module uh, was given by Bookwise over quadric hypersurface in any characteristic was Bookwise, Eisenberg and Herzog. So that comes into play. So that's, uh, so using that Achinger and uh, has given the classification of this sheaf. So I'll just write it in a, uh, so Q is, QD, QD is your uh, proj of your RPD. So what he does, we know that this, uh, the, I mean it's well known that if I take this vector bundle over my quadric hypersurface, projective quadric hypersurface, it is splits up in terms of the twist of the line bundle, ample line bundle or a spinor bundle. That is well known. What he, what the Chinger has done that if I take such a thing, it will split up and it, they, all the bundles which are O of QD, QI and uh, a spinor bundle of SJ. So he is telling when this bundles exactly will occur, they are saying. So he did that. Now we go through that whole machinery again and uh, we say this, this ranks occur and in a uniform way uh, if I look at the like mu and naught which is a rank of a spinor bundle. Uh, I give a density function for the rank. So rank density function, you think. You spread out those things. So this is a your mu, mu and not P. So this is there and then these rank functions, uh, mu I, I'm not writing everything here. So these are the density function, rank density function associated with the ranks of these bundles. So, so, so if I look, so my, my user density function is a positive linear combination of these density functions. That's one thing you get it. Now these functions, we know outside the difficult range, which I denoted IP, they behave like a polynomial, like over into, uh, means uh, rationals. There is no characteristic involved. Very good. IP is the problem and it is the where characteristic P behavior shows up. So what you do now, so I need to only know about this actually. So what you do that difficult range is IP, you write, I'm writing this term, is a union of I, uh, P of uh, N1 up to NL. So I'm index, I, this NL in, uh, stands for the indexing, uh, L belongs to N. So I'll just explain. And this NI belongs to the fixed integers, zero to D minus four. So you divide into infinite number of intervals. Actually, the membership of element belonging to this interval depends on the periodic expansion of that element. So that's, it's a lot of uh, messy and technical work. So here what you're doing, you are not able to cover the entire IP in terms of this. Uh, but approximately, means it's uh, like it covers other than outside a set of measure zero. But I can always ignore my set of measure zero because I, when I int integrate, I don't have to worry about that. So this is there. Now, this, notice this, I said this indexing, this stands for indexing. These are in, but this is the way I'm indexing them, they're independent of the characteristic, this indexing. So though interval depends on the length of the interval depends on the P, which P you're taking, but indexing doesn't. So it gives you a kind of uh, ground to compare various P characteristic changing there. So, so what we do is uh, on each uh, IP, uh, this IP of uh, N1 up to NL, 
you write the, your mu and not on this function. Uh, I'm just writing it uh, mu p of x as a polynomial function. H1, I'm sorry, this is, uh, I can't explain everything. It's a really, at times I myself get confused what I'm doing actually. So the thing is, uh, you have a difficult range and there will be fixed set of polynomials, okay? And uh, they, they are for each interval, there will be polynomial depending on the interval, the polynomial depend, but the number of variables depend, independent of the polynomial, t equal to one over p. So this is what you express for those intervals and then you integrate, okay? So, so you integrate, so the thing is uh, coming here, here some bit of analysis comes in, you have infinite interval on each interval you are, you will, each IP you will integrate this function, it's a nice uh, polynomial function, but when you integrate, you get a power series, when you take a sum of infinite interval, but since these are behaving very well actually this function, so they come uh, like a po power series over one matrix actually, so it's something like a integration of mu i, mu and not, will correspond to summation of uh, A of t, t equal to one over p, uh, where L is equal to zero to infinity, A power L, L equal to zero to infinity. So this is a matrix, A L t in a rational, with rational polynomials, and t equal to p is the answer here. But this infinite, this is a power series, given terms of a power of one single matrix. So what you prove that eigenvalue of this matrix is less than one if t is large enough. Uh, so here where I am, uh, my theorem. So that's where you get in a neighborhood of this thing, this P. So P, if T is less than something, this is a invertible matrix, so you can write as a rational polynomial, and that's what amounts to saying P greater than thing, then you have this formulation. And strictly increasing also involves similar kind of logic. So I don't want to get into that. So, so that's how you get, so you may ask question that, okay, I'm, constructing infinitely many intervals and uh, saying that on each interval there is a polynomial function, but perhaps they may just coincide. I'm making a heavy weather out of nothing, but uh, you take the first example where characteristic P shows, so which is I think D equal to four. So you, there I was able to compute uh, brutally this F uh, density function. So in fact, uh, this density function, this number, so there will be infinite interval and there, so on which the density function is a polynomial. So point of singularity of this function, that uh, function is in, has infinite num number of singular points. So it has a actually a limit point. So they genuinely occur the different polynomials. So uh, that's all I have to say.